This is Michal O'Hurley reporting for Diplomacy in Ireland, the European diplomat. I'm here with a sapper in Lehman in eastern Ukraine. Tell me, where are you from? Hi, uh, my name is Chris. I'm from the Isle of Man. And Chris, how long have you been here in Ukraine? Um, I came back um, three days after the invasion started this time, but I've been here for nearly three and a half years in the past. What duties are you carrying out here in Ukraine? So we run a small uh, volunteer EOD unit. So we're, we're mostly doing teaching for the Ukrainian armed forces and the police. Um, and then we help them to, to clear landmines and unexploded ordnance. It is ordinary practice for professional militaries to create a map whenever they lay a minefield. Are you finding that the Russian forces created maps? Is there a method to their madness? Or have they just peppered the area with landmines? Um, it really depends on who's been laying them. I think certainly for why they do so get a lot of AT with the AT mines is literally just to get people like this off the other. Chris, whether it's Vietnam or Bosnia, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, all across the world there are unexploded ordnance that kills people 20, 30, 40 years after a war. What percentage of the landmines do you think Ukraine will be able to clear in the near future? In the near future that's hard to say. Um, I do keep hearing a lot of talks from certain organizations within Ukraine saying that they need to speed the process up and do it in five or ten years. It's not a process that can be speeded up. You're looking at a hundred years. What can the West do to support your activities in demining Ukraine to make it safe for children, farmers, or even the soldiers still serving on the battlefield today. Keep sending the equipment through. The, the Ukrainian military is still lacking in, in training for EOD. They're, they're lacking in mine detectors, they're lacking in probes. Uh, they're lacking in, in detonators and explosives to be able to remove them as well. So. These are relatively low cost equipment, are yeah. they not? Yeah. And yet, you think they're critical to your work in demining? Absolutely, absolutely. The, pro the problem is um, you, Let's say a mine detector secondhand on the market might cost about 600 sterling. Um, the problem is they get damaged, they get destroyed, they get lost, they get blown up in vehicles. You know, kit unfortunately goes missing as well. It, it's just the way it is. Um, it, it's like any of the equipment. Uh, as an example, a lot of people turn around to me and say, there's been hundreds of thousands of IFACs come through. You can't need any more. That's not the way it works exactly, in a combat exactly, zone. Exactly, you know, so uh, unfortunately redundancy plays a, a huge part in it. Chris, I, I see you have a tourniquet and an IFAC yep. a medical kit for those who aren't familiar with the military. Your work is inherently dangerous. Yep. Um, despite your body armor, very little protection against unexploded ordnance. Oh, yeah. Have you experienced casualties, wounds, or deaths in your unit? Um, out of the foreigners I have working with me, we've had no injuries. Um, units that we've been helping to provide support for, um, certainly around this area, uh, they're having a lot of landmine issues. Um, they took 10 casualties in three days in one of the areas we were working in. It's seven degrees below zero. Yep. Will the frozen ground have an impact on exploding ordnance, or does this ordnance survive frozen ground? The, the ordnance itself generally survives, um, obviously because it's Soviet. The Soviet ordnance anyway was designed to deal with the cold. It generally doesn't, the cold generally doesn't play too much of a part on it. The, the problem that we do have is the cold makes it more harder for us because we can't probe the ground properly. So. And a lot of that's done by hand on your knees, isn't yeah. it? This is Mihol O'Hurley reporting from outside of Lehman in eastern Ukraine. 
I'm speaking with Chris. He's a sapper with an international unit training Ukrainians to demine and demining himself. In the background, you can hear the rumble of artillery fire. The war rages on. The only question is how much suffering the Russians will make the Ukrainians do because the trend is not good for Russia. They've been outgeneraled, outfought, and with Western support, they will surely prevail. This is Michal O'Hurley reporting for Diplomacy in Ireland, the European diplomat.